Hey guys, today we will be connecting our Unity app to a real-time database using the new Firebase SDK. I have put all the links and the code I have used in this project in the description. Before we start, if you like videos about game design and development, please like this video and subscribe to our channel as we post videos every week. So let's get started. If you don't have the Firebase SDK installed, you can check out our authentication video in which we set up a Firebase project and import the Firebase SDK. If you've done that, let's go to the Firebase console and open up our project. Head to the real-time database section and click create database. Let the location be United States, click next and select test mode. By selecting test mode, our database would be accessible to everyone and anyone can read or write the data for the next 30 days. This is fine for us for now as we haven't configured the rules yet. If you would like to know more about the Firebase security rules and how to set them correctly, do let us know in the comments below. Now click enable and it would create the database. The Firebase database is a node based database and the data is stored in key value pairs. Now here this is our main node. Let's create a child inside this and name it counter and set its value to be 0. To demonstrate reading and writing from the database, we will be creating an app that would display the counter value from the database and increase it by 1 on clicking a button. Let's open the Unity project and show that the database package is present in our project. If it is not, go to assets and import package. Now navigate to the folder that contains the Firebase SDK and select the database package and click import. It will ask you to select the folders to import so select all. Once it's imported, check for any errors on console. If everything is fine, then the Firebase SDK is successfully added to the project. Before we proceed, also ensure that the Google services file has the Firebase URL setup. If it does not, ensure that the Firebase database is enabled in your Firebase project and download the Google services file again. Now let's create a simple UI for displaying and incrementing our counter. To save time, I have already created a basic text element that will show you the value of the counter and a button element that increments the value by 1. Now let's create a game object to take care of the database connection. Add a script and name it Firebase DB Manager. Let's move the script to the scripts folder created before and now let's code it. First we import all the libraries we'll be using. Now we create a variable to store the reference for the database and a text variable to store the reference of the score text UI. For the Firebase code, I'm referring to its documentation and a sample project that they've created on GitHub. So in the start method, we first ensure that the Firebase database reference is initialized and then we add a listener to the counter node of the database. What this does is, each time the value is changed on the node, this function would be called. Now in the handle update score, we get the new data and then we display it in the score text. The update score function would be called whenever the button is clicked. In this, first we get the current counter value using the getValueAsync function. Once we get the value, we increment it by 1 and then update the value in the database using the setValueAsync method. If you want to know more about async functions, do let us know in the comments below. So to go through the flow, we have a listener attached to the counter node and a function which sets the value. So whenever this function is called, the value is updated in the Firebase and as the value is changed, the listener function is also called which updates the UI. Now let's test the project. As you can see, the value is initially set to 0 and on clicking the button, the value increases by 1 and it gets updated in the database as well. Now even if we restart the app, the value is still stored in the database so we can still access it and use it. I hope you found this video helpful. Do let us know your thoughts in the comments below and if you're interested in such videos, do subscribe to our channel.